the Second World War, the Allied commander Montgomery fought against his opposite number, Rommel, in the Battle of El Alamein. It was a defining battle in the war, and all realized that Rommel, also known as the Desert Fox, was a formidable enemy on the Nazi side. Montgomery reportedly carried around a picture of Rommel wherever he went. He never wanted to forget that his enemy was out there. Even in wartime, he realized that it was possible to forget where he was and what he was doing, and so he made himself remember on a regular basis that this was war and his enemy wanted him dead. He needed that in order to function effectively as a soldier. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus wants us to be similarly realistic. The final line of the prayer reminds us that we are in a desert situation and we have a terrible enemy. Let me read the whole of the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6 and verse 9. This then is how you should pray, Jesus says. <clears throat> Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. There is a deliberate shape to this prayer. We first remind ourselves of who we're praying to, our Father. We remind ourselves of where we've come, heaven. We pray to hallow God's name, to prize his gospel character more than anything else. We pray for cosmic realities, for God's kingdom to come, his will to be done on earth. And then we make three personal petitions at the end of the prayer. Notice the shape from God, heaven, the kingdom, and then three personal prayers. We pray for daily provision of daily bread. We pray for pardon for daily sins, and we pray for protection from the temptation of the evil one. Here we are with this final line, and Jesus leaves us with this need, this sobering need for protection. The reality is we may have a Father in heaven, and that is the defining reality, but it is also true to say that we have an enemy here on earth. There's a famous bestseller called Satan is Alive and Well on Planet Earth. I can't vouch for the book, I certainly can't vouch for the author, but the title is absolutely correct, isn't it? Satan is alive and well, and he prowls around planet Earth like a roaring lion. That's what 1 Peter chapter 5 tells us. We might think that God has planned a strange kind of salvation. What kind of salvation takes you through a desert where your enemy lies in wait? Well, this has always been the way. The Israelites came out of Egypt and they had to go through this testing time of the wilderness before they entered the promised land. And Jesus himself, he went into the wilderness in Matthew chapter 4 and he took on the evil one. And if we are in him, then we tread his path through temptation, through suffering, through extreme vulnerability and only then to the promised land. What should this make us do? It should make us pray. We pray to Christ, Lord, encamp around me to deliver me, as Psalm 34 verse 7 says. We say, Father, I am so weak, I can't make it through the wilderness on my own. The devil is prowling. Please keep him at bay. I fall for temptation all the time. Please clear it away. Clear it out of my path. As little children, we rest in Jesus and ask our Father for the benefits of Christ's work. Daily provision, daily pardon, and daily protection. Do you realize that this is what you need? Every day you need provision, you need spiritual sustenance. Every day you need pardon, you need to confess your spiritual bankruptcy. Every day also you need protection. You need to be led away from temptation and from the tempter. Have we forgotten that we are at war? Have we forgotten that the, the desert fox is out there? Have we forgotten we have an enemy of our souls who wants to devour us? Montgomery kept a picture of Rommel close by. He never let himself forget the reality of his enemy. Jesus likewise says, you have a father in heaven who is high over all and will have the victory, but you also have an enemy on earth who's bigger than you. What should you do? Pray, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one.